Somewhere around this point, we had gone through a couple of warehouses. We were uh, uh, still a very, very small company in the scheme of companies, but starting to actually be noticed online. We had a revenue run rate of about $5 million a year, and we were featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and, and the lead story, and, which was, was a, good, a good thing and a bad thing. It was good because it generated a lot of exposure for the company. And you have to keep in mind that in our first year, we didn't spend a dollar on advertising. It was all, anybody found out about us, it was either through word of mouth or through PR. So PR was important to us. And uh, in fact, since then, we've spent a significant amount of money on advertising, but, but word of mouth is still the largest source of our customers. Again, it being so powerful online. <laughs> but, uh, but having uh, this uh, uh, article was good because it generated lots of awareness and we got lots of new customers as a result of this article. And then those people, uh, you know, if, if we treated them right, did become evangelists for us. Um, it was bad also because when you get a big article like that, it's not just your customers who read it, but also your competitors. And one of the things that, uh, that was the wake-up call, whereas the, sort of the 2300% a year growth in web usage in our wake-up call, that Wall Street Journal article was Barnes & Noble's wake-up call. So, we, uh, uh, which was, basically that was uh, May of, uh, I guess, 96. It took them about a, a year from that point to launch a website, which they launched uh, back in May of this past year. And they launched that uh, website, which is a very reasonable website. In, uh, uh, it's not as good as Amazon.com uh, in any important respect, but it is a, it is a good first effort, and, and, and we were, it pays, as Andy Grove has told countless audiences, to be paranoid. Um, and uh, as I was discussing with one of what we had dinner earlier tonight with a few of the people in the audience, and, and uh, it pays to be humble and paranoid. Um, hard to be actually paranoid enough if you're not humble. And we were very worried about what Amazon.com, I mean, sorry, what Barnes & Noble would be able to do with their purchasing power and their uh, brand name. We decided instantly that we weren't going to let the purchasing power get in the way. So we were going to fund any purchasing power uh, difference. So we would have the same prices uh, no matter if our margins were lower. And then we would adopt a strategy of get big fast so that we could eventually level the playing field in terms of purchasing power. And that became a consistent focus of ours that we've articulated now to Wall Street and everybody else. Um, and, and it's actually at this point quite a well understood strategy. Um, the, uh, uh, I would say, but it, the interesting thing, of course, is that Barnes & Noble launched their website about five days or so before our initial public offering. Um, in, I'm sure a complete coincidence of timing, but it, but, uh, uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't upset anything, even though at the time it was very interesting because uh, there were several pundits, and one, one in particular who was making the lecture circuit, uh, talking about... Um, now that Barnes & Noble was here, it was going to be Amazon.toast uh, instead of Amazon.com. And, and this was actually, we, we even found this very funny. Um, it is an amusing thing to say. But we were worried, and we didn't know exactly what to expect. We knew that we were going to remain customer-obsessed. Our mantra became, it was interesting, too, one of the things I was most worried about is that Amazon.com for two years had been a company with virtually no competition. At this point, we already had over 300 employees. And uh, so we were sort of... Uh, I, was, I didn't know whether all the employees were ready for competition and whether, you know, in, in, very, in previous jobs and so on, people had always been in competitive environments and it was a competitive group of people. But we let our mantra be that we were going to obsess over our customers and not our competitors. So we would watch our competitors, learn from them, see what things they're doing good for customers and copy those things as much as we can. But we were never going to obsess over them. And that became our watchword. And it's actually worked very well. Since Barnes & Noble launched their site, we've gone from having a revenue run rate of about $60 million a year to a revenue run rate of having $260 million a year. This has happened in, in just 10 months. Um, we have also gone from having 340,000 customers to having over 1.5 million customers in that same period of time. And I am convinced that, I mean, it ha it, th there are, that there are two things. Um, a company like Amazon.com can only compete against a much larger company if you really do offer a better service. And we know by anecdotal evidence, focus groups, and quantitative research that there are three things that are important to our customers. Selection, ease of use and convenience, and price. 
And so every day we work on making sure that each of those three things are better at Amazon.com than they are anywhere else. And we have a saying that people ask me sometimes, are your customers loyal to you? And I say, absolutely, right up until the second that somebody else offers them a better service. And so we work on that very hard. And, uh, and then I think the thing that makes it work for us is the word of mouth. And it's that 58% of repeat customers every day, the 58% the of orders from repeat customers. Those people are our evangelists and help us sign up new customers. 